Very good evening to all of you. Uh, welcome to today's uh, YouTube live session with me, Srujit Kakar. Today we will be continuing with our uh, options uh, lesson number uh, 31, which is uh, uh, Iron Butterfly. Right, so I know uh, this has been uh, due for a pretty long time, but it's just that, you know, uh, everyone knows how things are going with Corona. So uh, Delhi was under lockdown for quite a while, due to which it was a little bit challenging for me because there are a lot of things I had to take care of. But yes, now that the things have eased out, so we'll continue again with the options course. So today we'll, we'll be uh, covering the, op the Iron Butterfly, which was still pending for us. And then we'll be left with, I guess, a calendar spread and after that eventually as and when I have some practical examples I'll be sharing pro, you know some sessions where we'll be looking at some practical examples I'll also be doing a session where now you know whatever we have covered will recap everything into a single session right just to understand you know what all strategies we learned just to summarize everything all right so let's get started with today's session before we do that uh, myself Srijit Kakar and let's also get done with the formalities so make sure you make sure you people go through the disclosure which talks about the representation risk disclosure risk and all in the market and also about the copyrights now uh, we have already covered the 30 lessons today we are doing our lesson number 31 which is iron butterfly and you will see just like uh, we did short strangle and then we did a modified version of short uh, strangle which was called as the iron condor because in short strangle we were having unlimited risk but by adding the offset units or i should have called them as the protective units we were able to convert that short strangle into an iron condor similarly you will see that short straddle which we did now short straddle is, is again a strategy where the risk is unlimited so what we will be doing if uh, in iron butterflies we will be adding those protective units and those protective units will convert the short straddle into an iron butterfly so again uh, with options we can do something which is called as non-directional trading which is not possible with stocks or futures because in stocks and futures you're always trading a particular direction you're either expecting prices to move up and you want to make benefit out of that move to the upside or you're expecting prices to move down and you want to make money out of that move to the downside right wherein you will either go long or you will go short but in options we can do trading which is called as non-directional trading which means we are not betting on the direction because option is a multi-dimensional asset so we are trying to make money from the other dimensions not the delta right because delta is your direction so we are trying to here make money from our theta which is time value and also from the vega right that is what we will be doing in a non-directional trade so options can be used to profit from lack of script move or when it is expected to remain range bound picking range is done through the proper application of demand and supply methodology so yes i do it based on demand and supply whatever your strategy might be like i have given a number of examples before it could be support resistance it could be fibonacci levels uh, whatever you might be using if you're expecting that uh, the uh, underlying or the script will remain range bound till expiry and what and you want to take benefit out of it that is where you can use your non-directional strategies we use options contracts as a substitute for shares and apply an option strategy when the script is expected to remain range bound between our areas of demand and supply using stock price or whatever the underlying might be to time the options play oops now when we talk about non-directional strategies we have already covered short strangle and short straddle this is something we do uh, when the iv implied volatility is in section 5 then we talked about that uh, if you want to now uh, make this make these strategies a little bit uh, because both short strangle and short straddle are unlimited risk strategies so we were now covering uh, you know the same strategies but including a protection unit but that is where we would prefer to apply these strategies not in section 5 but in section 4 so in section 4 yes we can apply iron condor and in section 4 we can also apply iron butterfly so let's see how do we create an iron butterfly so what is an iron butterfly first thing this is a strategy which creates a credit which means you will be a net seller you will be getting some credit in your account whenever you are doing an iron butterfly uh, just like your iron condor just like your short straddle just like your short strangle where you are selling options and by selling options you are collecting some premium and that is why these are credit strategies and we will be applying this when uh, iv is in section four so when implied volatility is in section four 
that is where you can apply it so this is what your implied volatility volatility implications would be that implied volatility has to be in section 4 whenever we are using iron butterfly or when we are even using iron counter what i'll say is even if you want to apply it in section 5 there is no harm with that but uh, you know we have a better strategy uh, for section 5 which is short strangle short straddle because what happens is when we are at those protective units because we also want to make money on vega uh, the amount which we are making on vega goes down and when you are already very inflated we are not expecting vega to go further up right we are definitely expecting vega to go down but when we are inflated vega can move up and vega can also move down so this is where we try to control that vega also by adding that offset units which yes still makes some money for us but compared to without those uh, protective units vega will be paying you a little much uh, a little higher right so that is uh, the reason we would prefer to apply this in section 4 now what is the application the application is that we have an expectation of price remaining range bound within our areas of demand and supply till expiry and uh, again we have already talked about first thing is we want that the implied volatility should be in section 4 uh, because we are in section 4 volatility can move uh, both ways it can go up it can also go down so if it starts moving against us we do not want it to hurt us a lot but yes if it starts going in our favor at least it should be making some money for us and that is what we do with than iron butterfly and like i have also talked about this in short straddle that you know in short straddle uh, if you compare it with short strangle in short strangle you still have a big range where you get the maximum profit but in uh, short straddle you don't have a big range right wherever is your short unit is the ang the anchor strike that is where you make the maximum money and now uh, you know defining a one single price where the a uh, script would, would be expiring uh, right on the date of expiry is very challenging right uh, so the the more the duration for the expiry the more challenging it would be so like i have said before that when it comes to short straddle or iron butterfly these are the strategies which you would probably prefer for weekly expiries right when you know that there are just probably three four days to the expiry uh, because now you do not expect uh you know prices to move in a very big range you expect the price to move in a very narrow range and that is where close closing to the uh, the anchor strike which we are selecting closing close to that anchor strike the probability becomes a little higher versus if you are getting into an uh, a trade where you still have 30 days or maybe 60 days to expiry that is where it will become a little bit challenging so just like short straddle when we are closer to expiry but yes uh, these are the things you have to take care of first the strategy should be used when implied volatility is in section 4 after reaching very inflated there is a potential uh, for IV to deflate in in fact you know this should have said after uh, reaching inflated we have the potential for iv to inflate as well as deflate that is where you know we would like to use an iron butterfly to take care of that vega so that vega does not hurt us a lot so this is an error from my side right i should have uh, rectified this this had to be that it can inflate it can also deflate uh, because it can inflate and deflate we don't want vega to hurt us a lot and that is why we will be using the iron butterfly so what are the characteristics of an iron butterfly fly the characteristics are uh, that the risk is limited why because uh, we will be adding those protective units as we move ahead you'll be seeing how that risk converts into a limited risk characteristic if you talk about your reward your reward will also be limited your reward is uh, the maximum reward is the premium you have collected you cannot have more than uh, you know you cannot have profit more than that and if you talk about your break-even points because we will be selling the call and put off the same strike so uh, the strike plus premium because you know we are in a range so you will be having uh, two break-even points points one on the higher side one on the lower side so your whether you take the call strike or you take the put strike because both the strikes will exactly be the same so the strike plus premium and strike minus premium would be your break even points now this is a delta neutral strategy that is what we started with that this is a non directional strategy because we are not trading direction we do not want delta to hurt us so that is why non directional strategies the deltas are always very close to zero as good as neutral theta would be positive because we are selling options whenever you're selling options time becomes as your friend for every day keeping the position overnight uh, time value theta would be paying you and vega would be negative 
because we want vega to reduce and the reduction in that vega will definitely benefit us all right now how does the pnl graph look like for an iron butterfly uh, if you uh, look at iron butterfly it will be something like this now if you talk about your short straddle right so short straddle was not having this short straddle was something like this right we were having unlimited risk on both sides but now by adding those protective units what we have done is that after a certain uh, point our loss would become limited no matter how low the price goes or no matter how high the price goes we'll not be having a loss which is more than this so this is what we do we can convert that short straddle into a iron butterfly all right so again what is the application expectation of price remaining range bound between our demand and supply zone still expiry so what we need to do first is we need to identify our area of demand and our area of supply and if we are expecting that by expiry prices will remain in this range that is where we can plan some non-directional trades so let's assume i want to plan non-directional trades and i saw that implied volatility is in section four and therefore i would like to apply or create an iron butterfly so what do we do to apply an iron butterfly we will sell at the money call and we will sell at the money put which will be the center of this uh, you know this range right so whatever this range is so let's imagine that this is 100 and this is 200 then the center is 150 so when the current market price is at 150 right so if it is a little you know here and there still acceptable it, but it should not be something like this that you're creating it at 180 or you're creating it at 120 so if you are let's say uh, the center strike is 150 and you're still somewhere around let's say 155 145 still acceptable right so this is what we will be doing we will be selling at the money call and we will be selling at the money put so if we were doing this this is what we called as a short straddle and this is how the pnl graph of a short straddle was but now what we want is that this unlimited risk characteristic that on both sides if the price you know violate this demand area and keep going down uh, down i have unlimited risk similarly if prices they violate the supply and keep going up i have unlimited risk yes though we will be using a stop loss right but now what we are doing is we are converting this strategy into a limited risk strategy strategy so to do that what we do is we buy and out of the money put which is below our demand zone and similarly we buy and out of the money call which is above our supply zone so we buy and out of the money call we buy out of the money put and this is what we call as an iron butterfly so what is the action the action is we sell at the money call which is our anchor unit and we also sell at the money put which is also our anchor unit so these two were our anchor units and along with that what we do is when the current market price and again you know we are doing this when we are at the center of the range and the anchor would also be the center strike now along with this we what we also do is we buy and out of the money call and we buy and out of the money put so these are the offset units or we can also call them as the protect protective units or the protection units uh, parameters anyhow we know whenever we are selling options so the closer we are to expiry the better it is for us but in no case your expiry should not exceed more than 60 days ideally i will say uh, under 30 days right but in no case you know even if you want to be the most aggressive person not above 60 days because we know uh, the more further away we are from uh, from expiry uh, you know the theta will not be paying us a lot because the closer we start getting to expiry the faster the theta decays right so that is why we want uh, to be closer to the expiry the closer we are the better it is and again the vega of the short uh, of the uh, uh, the and the uh, uh, offset units should be half of the short unit so whatever my short unit vega was uh, so whatever the vega of the call is this call which i'm buying i would uh, you know buy a call which has a vega which is almost half of it similarly the put which i have sold and when i'm buying this put i'll uh, pick a put which has the vega which is almost half of it and they also have to be equidistant right so again now if you're finding one of them at equidistance at almost about half but the other one is not half do not worry right uh, again a little here and there will do that is why it says you know almost close to it doesn't have to be exact uh, but yes this is what we want to do so what do we do the anchor units are at the money when the current market price is at the center of demand and supply zones and offset units are call which is above our supply zone with the vega which is half of the short call and similarly the put below the demand area with the vega which is half of the short put now if we uh, talk about the maintenance what do we be doing if uh, the price hits our stop loss be that on the demand side or be that on the supply 
supply side we will be closing the position and if any of these short units they start trading under 10% or whatever premium we collected so let's imagine for the call I collected a premium of let's say 30 rupees so once we get to 3 rupees which is 10% of 30 it's better to close your position right versus keep holding it for again x number of days just to make that extra 3 rupees right so why, why to do that uh, for just that 10% and yes uh, in case the implied volatility changes we can also evolve so as we move ahead we'll also be looking at evolution but now let's take an example so let's assume I have a supply zone and I have a demand zone and I am expecting that till expiry prices would remain range bound within this area of demand and supply so we have demand area we have a supply area and along with that we can see that our implied volatility is in section 4 so what do we do at this given point of time you can see my center strike would be somewhere around 1000 so what we do is we sell the 1000 call we sell the 1000 put both of them are the anchor units and this is what we call as a short straddle so if we create a short straddle it will be something like this that uh, if you look at this can you see we collected a premium of 62 rupees by selling the call we collected 28 rupees 20 paise by selling the put we collected 33 rupees 90 paise so the total debit is minus 62 which means your 62 rupees 10 paise is the credit now if you talk about your uh, Break-even points, like I told you, your break-even points would be the strike, uh, which is 1000, minus 62.10 and plus 62.10. So on this side, it will be plus 62.10 and on this side, it will be minus 62.10 because we'll be having uh, two break-even points. And that is what you can see here that the upper protection is 1062.10 uh, and the lower protection is 937.10 because it is going to be the strike minus the premium and plus the premium. So this is, this is what happens in an iron butterfly but what is the challenge with the iron butterfly the challenge with the iron butterfly now is if the price keeps going down we have unlimited risk if the prices keep rising we have unlimited risk so what do we do to this uh, uh, this uh, sh this short straddle now to this short straddle we add the protective unit so again we were already here right so what we do now we add the protective units so what we'll be doing is we will be buying a call which should be having vega almost half of this call which we have sold uh, and above the uh, supply zone similarly we'll also be uh, buying uh, uh, out of the money put which is gonna be having a vega which is almost half but yes you also have to make sure they should be equidistant so example can you see from thousand if i'm going 100 rupees up similarly from thousand i should be going 100 rupees down so this is 900 and this is 1100 so we buy the 1100 call we buy the 1100 the 900 put and what happens now you can see initially we were collecting around 62 rupees but now we are still collecting 51 rupees right 50.80 so it's not that you're not collecting any premium we are still collecting some premium but what has happened now can you see that unlimited risk characteristic now converted into a limited risk characteristic that beyond a certain point I'll not be having any more loss because what is going to happen if the prices just start going down then the, uh, the, the put which I have bought will start making money for me and similarly if the the prices they keep going up the call which I have bought will start making money for me right so whatever loss I'll be having this will be balancing that loss and that is why it becomes a uh, limited risk uh, strategy from an unlimited risk strategy so again here if you see you still get a debit of uh, minus 50 which means you get a credit of uh, almost 51 rupees if you look at your delta you can see your delta is almost uh, negligible as good as zero so it's a non-directional strategy we talked about that when we are applying this strategy our vega is negative because we want vega to reduce that is also going to pay us so now you can see my vega is 1.37 but when we were not doing a uh, iron butterfly when and we were only doing that short straddle you can see during that short straddle I was having a Vega which was 2.4 which means for every 1% change I will be either making or losing 2.4 uh, rupees but now what I've done is by adding those offset units I have also reduced the uh, amount it is, it is gonna hurt me why because in case the implied volatility does not go down to section 3 from 4 and starts moving on to section 5 it's not gonna hurt me now 2 rupees 40 paise it's now only gonna hurt me one rupee 13 paise but we 
uh, but if in case it goes in my favor i'm still making some money out of it right and similarly you can see theta your theta which is time value is still positive which is going to make money for me and uh, yes this is what an iron butterfly is all about all you are doing is to the short straddle you are adding the protective units and by adding those protective units you have converted that unlimited risk characteristic of a short straddle into a limited risk characteristic of an iron butterfly so technically your short strangle uh, when we add the protective units becomes as your iron condor and similarly your short straddle when we add the protective units uh, it is called as your iron butterfly so this is what an iron butterfly is and yes uh, if you have any questions any queries feel free to put it in the uh, comment section i try to answer you know wherever your questions queries are as soon as possible and yes that brings us to the end of today's session thank you so much for joining in i will be seeing you now sometime during the week where we will be covering the same topic in hindi as well and then we'll also be catching up on sunday where we will be doing our weekly analysis session so again thank you so much for joining in in case you're not subscribed to my channel make sure you do that so that you get notification whenever i go live next uh, until we meet next uh, take care trade safe bye bye